In this lesson, you're going to learn how to find the lateral area, surface area, and volume of a prism. And we're going to go through three examples. We're going to start off easy and get progressively more challenging. But first, let's talk about the formulas for finding the lateral area, surface area, and volume of a prism. Now, what exactly is a prism? Well, when you look at these three diagrams here, you can see a prism is a polyhedron, which means that all the faces or all the sides are made up of polygons. But what you have is you have two polygons that are referred to as the bases. Those are parallel and they're congruent, meaning they're the same size and shape, and they're separated by that height. So here we've got two triangles, here we have two hexagons. So that's basically what a prism is. But when you find the lateral area, what you're doing is you're finding the area of the sides. Lateral means sides. And when you find the surface area, you're finding the area of the sides as well as the two bases. And when you find the uh, lateral area, what you're doing is you're doing the perimeter of the base times the height. And we'll, I'll talk about that more when we do a net where we unfold the figure. The last concept is the volume. Like if you're filling this up with water, how much water would it hold? Well, that's going to be the area of the base times the height. Whenever you see that capital B, that means the area of the base. So let's go through these examples and you'll understand how this works. Say I take some scissors and I cut the edge of this box, right, and I unfold it. What you would end up getting is you'd get this rectangle like this, and what you have is like a top, which is a square, and a bottom, which is a square. So you're basically unfolding it. And so this lateral area here, it's the perimeter of the base. See how that's 16? See this is 4, 4, 4, and 4? That's the perimeter of the base times the height, which is 10. That's going to give us the area of this rectangle, like length times width. So that's where that formula comes from. So lateral area equals perimeter of the base times the height. Perimeter we can see is going to be 16. And then the height is the distance between the two bases, the two squares, which is 10. That gives us a lateral area of 160 centimeters squared. So with area, you want to have units squared. Volume is going to be units cubed. Length is just the units. But now to find the surface area, we want to take the lateral area, which is the area of the sides but we also want to add on the two bases, the top and the bottom. Now the bottom, you can see it's a square. 4 times 4 is 16 times 2, since we have two of them, right? So that's going to be 32. So if we just add on another 32 centimeters squared, our surface area, sometimes referred to as the total area, is going to be 192 centimeters squared. And then the last one is the volume, and that's going to be the area of the base, the capital B area of the base, which in this case you can see 4 times 4, it's a square, that's 16 times the height, which is 10. It's kind of like taking a, a stack of sticky notes. You've got a square and you keep stacking them up. That gives you the third dimension or the volume. And so here for volume, we have area of the base 16 times the height 10, which is 160. But because it's volume, it's centimeters cubed. It's like you're filling this up with like little uh, ice cubes. And that's how many would contain, be contained inside here. Now let's go to number two, a little bit more challenging here. See if you can do this one. We want to find the lateral area, surface area, and volume of this triangular prism. See how the top and bottom are our triangles? This was a square prism. This is a hexagonal prism. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to find the perimeter of the base times the height. So the perimeter of the base is going to be the distance all the way around this triangle. Three, four, oh. They didn't tell us what that side is. Well, because it's a right triangle, we can do the Pythagorean theorem to find this hypotenuse, the side across from the right angle. That's our C side. So we have C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. C squared equals 25. And if we take the square root, we get 5. Okay, so now we can find the perimeter. It's just going to be 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5 is 12. So that's 12 times the height, which is the distance between the two triangles. That's 8. And that's going to give us 96 inches squared for our lateral area. Now, how about for the surface area? Well, we're going to take the lateral area, which is the area of the sides, plus the area of the base times 2, since we have a top and a bottom. The only thing is, is that when you find the area of a triangle, we have to use the triangle area formula, which is 1 half base times height. So let's see, so 1 half times the base, which would be 3, times the height, which is 4. Remember, the height is perpendicular to the base. That's going to give us 6. But remember, we have two of those. We have a top and a bottom. So that's 2 times 6, which is 12. 
Then we just have to add the 12 to the area of the size, which is 96. And that's going to give us 108 inches squared. That's the total area or the surface area. Now, if you want to find the volume, you want to find the area of the base, okay, times the height, and that's going to be your volume. The area of the base, we already figured out that that was 6, okay, for the triangle, times the height 8, so that's just going to be 6 times 8, which is 48 inches cubed, and that's the total volume. Now, let's look at number 3. This one's a little bit more challenging. Okay, for number 3, you might be saying, Mario, can I just find the area of, like, each face and then add them all up to get the total surface area. You can definitely do that, um, and a lot of students like to do it that way, but some students, they like using formulas, so that's what we're kind of going through here. Either way, you're going to get the same result. But let's talk about this one, a more challenging one. Uh, the lateral area, we have to do the perimeter, which is the distance all the way around, so that's going to be 5 times 6 sides, which is 30, and then the height, which is the distance between these two hexagons, which is 6, that's going to give us 180 feet squared. So that's the lateral area or the area of the sides. Now, when I'm doing these, sometimes what I like to do is I like to write down the formula first, and then underneath it, put what I, you know, what I find, and I can kind of go back and forth and see what I'm missing. It keeps things a little bit more organized, and uh, oftentimes students like that a little bit better. Uh, the surface area, though, now we're taking the lateral area, which is right here, the 180, plus 2 times the area of the base. Now, the base is a hexagon, and you probably learned how to find the area of regular uh, polygons in an earlier lesson. The formula is 1 half the apothem times the perimeter. So let's see. So 2 times 1 half, that's just 1. So now we have 180 plus apothem times perimeter. The perimeter of the base we know is 5 times 6, or 30. So now all we have to do is figure out what that apothem is. So remember, the apothem is this perpendicular distance from the center to one of the sides. So this is our apothem right there. You can subdivide this up into triangles. But this apothem, let's go ahead and draw this a little bit larger here. So we've got 360 degrees forms a circle, but if we divide 360 up into six angles here, each one of these angles is going to be 60 degrees. That's the central angle. If we drop an altitude, that's going to bisect the angle, so it's going to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's also going to bisect the side, so that means this is going to be 5 over 2. Now remember, in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the side across from the 30 degree angle, we call that x. The one across from the 60 degree angle, we call that x root 3, and the one across from the 90, 2x. So to get from this short leg to the longer leg, you can see we're multiplying by the square root of 3. So this apothem here is going to be 5 halves times the square root of 3. Now if we multiply this out, we can do a little bit of reducing. 2 goes in here once, 2 goes in here 15 times. 15 times 5 is 75 times the square root of 3 plus 180, and that's an exact answer. You can do this on your calculator if you want to get an approximation or round to the hundredths and that's going to be feet squared. Now, the last part is finding the volume. It's the area of the base times the height. Well, we found the, um, the area of the base, which was uh, one-half of apothem times perimeter, okay, for a regular polygon, times the height. So we've got the apothem, which we found out was 5 over 2 times the square root of 3. The perimeter is the perimeter of the base, which is 30, and the height, which is 6. So if we multiply that all out, let's see what we get. Uh, well, 2 goes into 30 15 times. 2 goes into 6 3 times. Uh, let's see, 15 times 5 is 75, times 3 is 225, times the square root of 3, and that's going to be feet cubed since it's volume, and that's an exact answer. When you're working with these problems, some of the toughest um, issues that students have is memorizing all the formulas for like cones and pyramids and prisms and cylinders, etc. So what I did is I put together uh, a more comprehensive video kind of covering all these different shapes in one video and show you how to memorize the formulas, how the different shapes are related, etc. So follow me over that video right there and we'll dive into some more of these examples.